Yeah, so overall purpose. Overall purpose, I feel like my overall purpose is more steering towards helping people define themselves. You know what I mean? Like mentoring and things of that nature because every time I pour my energy into things, I, I seem to be able to bring the best out of people. You know what I'm saying? Almost like talent manager-ish type of vibe. You know what I mean? So if, if I feel a purpose, I feel a purpose in helping others. You know what I mean? Like majority of my career, which I've been in entertainment for about 10 years now, 26, you know what I'm saying? I started when I was about 16. Uh, it all started with me helping my um, brothers get shows. I started as an event manager, like more, more, more of a, I am an event manager, more of a manager for artists, artist management, you know what I'm saying? And I was managing Bad Honey Izzy, Bad Honey Judd, this is from Baltimore, yeah. you know what I mean? And Bad Honey Jimmy. We were being me at first, brothers must eat, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We were young, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's the message. That was the message that we put out there. Um, and we was all rapping at first. We were all rappers. Mm-hmm. But, we, but I mean, it didn't excite me as much. It excited them. You know, the old spin the bands, woo, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, you know, that excited them. It didn't really excite me. Mm-hmm. What excited me was making things happen. You know what I'm saying? Networking, talking to people. Mm-hmm. So, when I did that, and I was able to get a show booked at 16 years old in the club that they typically don't let people 21 and up in, I knew that I had some sort of talent in doing this and making things happen, connecting the dots. So I believe my purpose lies in connecting the dots somewhere. Maybe it may not be me being a pastor. It may not be me being a, a PR or A&R, you know what I'm saying? It may not even be in me being an event host. Maybe all of it combined. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I'm not sure what it is to ask me a question. Y'all check with me in uh, 2030. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I see uh, you were saying that Rogan uh, and I heard Kevin and Beat Moon. Yeah. Um, like on road, bro. On road is so is. Mm-hmm. We want to hear the backstory. You know what I'm saying? It's always two sides of a person. Okay. We want to hear a full party. You know what I'm saying? Like, talk about the struggles which you went through, like specifically. Like, because people looking at you as motivation, believe it or not. So go beat that up. Man, that is almost crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to DC. <laughs> but, but look, man, really, uh, how it all started, you know, came up in West Baltimore, uh, in the rough neighborhood, Poplar Grove in Elgin, you know what I mean? I would have lived over West my entire life. I was born in Cherry Hill, South Baltimore. And, um, you know, I wasn't old enough to remember much of anything, but I moved when we was like, when I was younger and grew up in West Baltimore, Rosedale Street, down to Poplar Grove. And when I moved in Poplar Grove, it's a funny story, we moved from across the street, literally, literally across the street in Landlord, had a house across the street too that was on, on the house that we was at. Mm-hmm. So we moved across the street. Like, I ain't never heard of nobody moving across the street yet, except <laughs> me. Like, moved across the street. So that's basically what it was. That was, that was my life. And, um, you know, I used to get into certain situations that I, I learned from. I, I, I made a decision not to regret anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I don't regret any decision I made. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I feel like everything that I've been through, I've learned something. And as long as you learn something from your mistakes, you turn your L's and the lessons like Drake said, you know what I'm saying? What does two L's mean? When you turn them up right. I don't know, man. L, let me show you. It's Spencer W. Yes, sir. <laughs> he knows. He knows. Look. Okay, okay. A win. So at the end, you're going to win as long as you learn from your mistakes. What's the biggest lesson? The biggest you know? lesson? Stop smoking. <laughs> that that may be in, in, in the lesson, but don't don't move off of your emotions. Mm-hmm. You know, don't make decisions based off and that was actually I do a podcast kind of every Wednesday. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With artists and entrepreneurs and that's something that uh officially two times had said on my last episode and he was just like, Don't let your emotions dictate your decisions and I and I felt that all the way. Why? Because that's not something that I do. If somebody feels some type of way about what I'm doing, yeah, that's them. Yeah. I can't hold on to that. That has nothing to do with me. 
just like if I'm feeling some type of way about how somebody is moving or doing things, I can't act off of that based off of how I feel. But at the end of the day, you don't mix business with pleasure. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's basically how I'm moving and what I've learned to not get so involved, yeah. get so involved in it and not to overcommit. That's something that I've learned, not just with business, mm-hmm. but with life. Yeah. Don't overcommit. When I say overcommit, I mean, don't commit yourself more than what you have to, thinking that it'll be either appreciated or reciprocated, because you might not get either. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't overcommit. Put in as much as you need to put in and get to the next thing. And the next thing, so many things that happen, you can't just be focused on one thing. Yeah, that's funny you say that, though, because a lot of people, like, for myself too, like, growing up, they like, why are you always just trying to balance everything? Like, you know what I'm saying? Trying to do a lot at once. But, you know, it's only a few that can do that. You know what I'm saying? That, that can migrate and maneuver like that. But that'll also help him so he won't, so he won't crash out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Crash out trying to trying to drift off and do just one thing and it, and it don't work out. And then now you're depressed. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah. I hear what you're saying, though. Yeah, that's sure. great. But, um, Let's go off of reputation. How big is reputation? To me, it's funny that that word starts with an R because I hold respect high in reputation. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It could be somebody that doesn't know anybody. For example, I didn't know anybody when I got to North Carolina and I sold mm-hmm. by my mother. And she didn't live down here. She moved down here, but that's another story. You know what I'm saying? Respect. Yeah. I hold way higher than reputation because you can have reputation and you could be the the lowest of the low. Yeah. You know what I mean? And got that reputation just by doing lowly things. So I don't hold that high at all. But I hold character high and respect high. So if you give respect, that's what you will receive in return. So I hold respect high. Yes. You know? Yeah, yeah. So I seen I seen you a lot, and you only you know you, you meet a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? With MC, uh, party promoter, right? No, I wouldn't even hold that time. Mm-hmm. I would just consider myself a mogul. Mm-hmm. So you can so you can say yourself like I'm predictable. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. That's a popular Prime example. Love is burning. Shout out to love is burning, man. It's all about love. Oh, love is right now, man. Listen, I'm an entrepreneur full time. You know what I'm saying? Just recently, a couple of months ago, I linked up with my partner, Sean. You know what I'm saying? And ever since we linked up, we've been killing the game in Riley. Like, uh, this is the seventh time I've restocked and had since I started selling them in December. It's January, it just hit February. Just hit February. And I always get, what, about 50 hats. I would get about 50 hats. Yeah. So that's, that's about 350 hats. About 350. So that's a, that's a, like the, the solo. Like I see you always by yourself to be honest. Like every time I see you, you show up by yourself. Do you feel protected? Mm-hmm. Because in Baltimore, I see, it's a funny thing you said that I, I used to be like, it seemed like in Baltimore, everybody used to run in clicks. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Even to the point where we was in high school and it was groups. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You had you had uh, young trendsetters, shot the car now, Nicholas, that came up with the Wipe Me Down dance that's viral over all over the internet. You know what I'm saying? He was a, he was the originator of young trendsetters. And young trendsetters, YTS, young trendsetters in Baltimore was actually the, the first, one of the first people or groups to start up the whole group thing. And, you know, high school, we had all type of crazy things. No matter what city it was, <laughs> and we had all type of crazy yeah, things yeah. And, and groups mm-hmm. and everything. But I learned in high school to be dolo. I learned that. I had to learn that. You know yeah, what I'm saying? It's hard for a lot of yeah, it's people to this day that still don't know how to be dolo or be to themselves or be their own person. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I learned that in high school. And how did I learn it? I got into a situation. I almost got expelled, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it was based off of me getting into an altercation with somebody that I thought we was cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't that. It was just the hype of it. Mm-hmm. I was a popular dude. Why? Because I had two jobs, 
fashion, but I always had fashion sense. I always wanted to express myself through what I wore. You know what I mean? So, you know, chicks, chicks dig me. You feel me? I always, I actually had the chick I was messing with. Oh, excuse me. I, I don't want to say no, no. Yeah, so I, I always had chick the females around. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we was all cool. Like, it was always a vibe. And some dudes didn't like that. They, but they would act like they would and be like, oh yeah, what's up, that what's up? That's what's up, time, man. Insecurity had female tendencies all the time. Ex- exactly, yeah. you know what I mean? So, long story short, you know what I mean? After that situation, everybody turned against me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I got, I got suspended. And by the time I got suspended and came back, you know, I handled the situation. And after I handled the situation, I cut all ties with all the fake energies and everything. Mm-hmm. This is my senior year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I could have not graduated, but I did. You know what I'm saying? I had the best situation and I cut people off. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's how I learned to be alone. Was that your question? Uh, you always see me alone, and that's that's a part of the reason why. So I hope people at DHS High School, Digital Harbor High School, see this. This is why I don't rock with y'all. <laughs> y'all cool. Y'all cool in y'all own way. Y'all at you family salute to y'all doing y'all thing. But I'm alone. That's good though, it's healthy though, because like you said, a lot of people, a lot of people, it's, it's all for them, you know. And not even just, even like, you know, like with relationships or anything, it's hard to be lonely, but you learn more than so. To be lonely, being lonely. Yeah, you, know? you learn about yourself, you yeah. write about that. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't know who they are. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know who they are, so they go based off of who they hang around. Right? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's not a way to live because you are actually by yourself, you won't be lost. You don't know where to go. You know what I mean? Like, you're just going to be like, well, what do I like to do? I always did with, with Raquel wanted to do or Lil Beanie wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? So, what do I like? You don't know because you never gave yourself a chance to like anything. Right. You know? Yeah, do you believe in coincidence? Coincidence? Yeah. Uh, no. No, I'm happy you said that. Everything happens for a reason. Everything. Right. Everything. Yeah. I follow my gut and say, yo, it's so funny. That she, it's like you asking all the right stuff. Because yeah. I don't believe in coincidence. I really don't. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everything I do, literally everything I do, because there's been times where I wasn't in control of certain situations based off of not listening to my gut and say when I was younger. But today, yeah. I listen to my gut and full fledged. Like, if I get a feeling like I shouldn't be here no more, and I'm gonna tell you a story about uh, not believing in coincidence. I had an event at uh, the old club love years ago, probably around the time when I first got here. You know, I was doing my thing, hosting for certain artists and things of that nature. Quando Rondo came to Rob. Quando yeah. Rondo and Tokyo Jets, they came to Rob and love the night club. You know what I'm saying? It was a snowstorm that night. You feel me? And it was one of those hood events, you know what I'm saying, where the majority of the crowd was like rowdy to a certain yeah. extent, you know what I mean? Um, that didn't phase me coming from where I come from and of course coming from where you come from. That doesn't phase you, like, all right, you know what I mean? Right. 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 <laughs> so I'm hosting, you know, rocking show and everything, but mind you, it got about that time, the events over, Pondo Rondo to the left, Tokyo just and left, you know, it's really time to go. Yeah, everybody's sure. scoping out. Man. Everybody's scoping out. And, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. And, and, and I didn't pick up on that how I should. Mm. Right? Yeah. So, you know, I feel the off energy in the room. I'm like, ah, I'm a buddy. Not listening to my gut and saying, mm. you know, I, I'm willing to get paid. You know what I'm saying? But my gut said, you need to go. Text them. Call them. You need to go. Then listen. You know what I'm saying? So as I'm in the DJ booth packing up and everything, long story short, two buttholes go through the DJ booth. Fuck, fuck, fast. Faster than I can blink. Faster than I can. All I see. If I respond to the reaction, it's like all I really seen was smoke and a loud sound. I thought, when I first heard it, I thought somebody like dropped like a glass or drop a bottle or something like that because I think that was the sound of the bullet busting through the glass of the door, the entrance. Mm. 
So I thought, you know how it be loud at the end of the club. Yeah. You just like, oh, people just cleaning up and stuff. I'm thinking somebody dropped like a glass bottle. Something just broke. I'm like, right, whatever. But it's ha- it happened so fast that that's all I could think about. So I'm like, oh, somebody dropped a glass next to you, no smoke. Get down. I'm in the DJ booth with DJ Reckless, DJ Third, um, the significant other at the time. Um, and I believe some other chick. And basically, like, all I knew was, like, get low. That's it. And it's not the first time I've been in a situation where there's, you know, gunshots and things of that nature, but it was so unexpected that I'm like, yo, like, literally, I'm standing right here, the bullet hole, the bullet must have went like this. Must have went like this. If I was even, like, I don't know, you feel me? The other one, like, went low. I think it was low, like, it was like boom and boom. You feel me? Ain't nobody in the DJ booth get hit. Exactly. Ain't no, exactly. Ain't nobody get hit. And at that moment, I'm like, yo, I could be gone right now. Like, I could be, I could be gone right now. Like, yeah. and the chick, you know, she like, get me out of here. Can't ride for her. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, it was, I'm just like, the whole time, like, yo, I really couldn't just, I don't know, you feel me? And that's based off the knowledge to my gut instinct. Because mm-hmm. my gut was saying go. My gut then said go. Mm-hmm. You can collect that bread at another time. Go. The energy is off. Yeah. You know? Then listen. That's the first rule. Your intuition. That's the first rule of, of being like a street. Being having streets months. Mm-hmm. You gotta listen to your intuition. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But with that, do you feel like the lessons keep happening until you, until you actually get it? Did you actually get the action out of the way? Nope. I learned lessons once. That's good. I learned lessons once. That's one of my things. That's my prerogative. See, like, as I go. That's my prerogative. Hey, look, we all young ears. They like, I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's what I prefer. I prefer to learn lessons once. I don't want to keep learning. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because at that point, you're not learning anything. You're being a fool. Exactly. You know what I mean? You're being ignorant to the lesson that's trying to be given to you. Yeah, so I'm trying to learn lessons once. If I learn something once, then I just learn to just steer away from that. That have the progress to move on. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Turn your yeah. L's into lessons. Right. Mm-hmm. First, first of all. When it comes to the characters, the characters of, of the people you hang around, what do you expect out of them? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like this guy. I like this guy. But do I expect? I expect you to be ambitious. And whatever it is that you want to do, even if you sell drugs, be ambitious at it. Be ambitious at it. You know what I'm saying? Be the best, I guess. I mean, I, I want to keep myself around criminals often. But I mean, I used to, but it's not a thing for me anymore because that's a liability. To something that I want to do. If that's not what I'm doing, then why I su- surround myself with people that can compromise what I have going on just based off of what you're doing? Mm-hmm. You get it? Yeah. So, what do I expect? I expect you to be ambitious. That's point blank like loyal, you know, um, trustworthy. Trustworthy is probably the first one I should have said. Yeah, it's at the top. A long way more dead. Yeah, because I, I had really bad trust issues. That's why I don't. I don't, I don't claim friends like that. I got, like, you know what I mean? I got a lot of associates, yeah. but friends, that's a heavy word for me. Mm-hmm. Heavy, it's a heavy yeah. word for me. You know what I mean? So that's the number yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. My, I done been stabbed in the back too many times not to hold that high. It's you gonna happen when you're a good person. It's mm-hmm. gonna happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You gotta move, you gotta move, you gotta move right. When it comes to supporting black business, how important is that? Oh, that's top, 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 top. I love your question. Yeah. <laughs> Why well, I came here because this is expressing how I feel. Yeah. So I'm gonna tell y'all a story. I'm gonna tell y'all a story. This is an exclusive story. As if nobody heard it besides the person that that it happened with. Shout out to Sean. You know what I'm saying? So boom. This partnership that I have right now with another friend was all based off of me just supporting black-owned business. You know what I'm saying? So I, I happen to be in Barry Barnes, 
another black business song, like Apple Bird, shout out to Apple Bird. Big head stuff, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, you know, shout out to Apple Bird. Um, but I was helping her to put up a shelf in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, dude comes in the store, or I think he was already in, and dude comes in the store, and he's got like merch with him or hats with him and stuff. My first instinct was like, what's this guy doing? You know what I'm saying? Mind you, I'm putting up a shelf. This is right, this is probably right around the time, probably like one of the days after I quit my my, my job. I worked a nine to five for five, six years, five, six, seven years, five, six years, five, six years. I worked a nine to five and they funded my living and everything like that. It was a government job, good pay and all that stuff, but I was not happy. It was really dead end if you ask me. You know what I'm saying? Was, I wasn't going anywhere. You know? And I don't like being told to do Oscar. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I was over it. And after, every year every year that passed by, I told myself, this is my last year here. I even went through the trouble of, so we used to wear work boots there, right? So we would re-up on the work boots every year because they would get tarnished and old and you know what I'm saying? But instead of reading up on the boots, I said, I'm not getting new boots. You know why? Because this is my last pair of boots. You know what I'm saying? You was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Said, look, I ain't about to come back. Yeah, <laughs> that was after the first year. After the first, mind you, I said six years. So after the first, I'm like, I'm like, I ain't, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be here long. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I did You, You want to get new boots? I'm like, nah, I'm good. You know, I ain't gonna be here long. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like, just put it on one of my checks or something like that. Like, cause they pay for the boots. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And after a while, they just started getting war and tore and war and tore. Water started getting in them. And I'm like, you know, that, that, that trickles down your confidence because you're like, dang, I've been said I was gonna be up out of here. But I need the money. I need to pay these bills. I need to do this. I need to do that. You know what I'm saying? So time and time again, you know, I ended up bringing up on the boots because the first pair didn't go for a while. I kept them because I'm like, nah, I'm right around the corner. Like, I'm right around the corner. This, this, this is it. And I'm going to keep these boots as a reminder that I made it out, right? Mm-hmm. So every year, mind you, six years. So after the first time I read up, I ain't going to lie. I lost confidence a little bit. I'm like, I guess I, this is life. This is life. I'm just going to be working here for that. You know what I'm saying? And every time I did that, I lost a little bit of confidence until I finally got fed up, which is probably what, the end of last year. I got fed up, I was tired. And don't you know when you're tired, you're tired. Mm-hmm. You're tired, like if you're in a relationship and you got, you're not tired. Yeah, you're like, you're like, you like, you like, this shit got one more thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that with the job. Like this dude got one more thing to say to me that I don't like. And I'm just gonna be like, you know why you got it? You know what I'm saying? And that was my mindset. My mind, and they was getting on me about being on the phone. Why? Because I did not want to be there. I'm handling the business on my phone. I'm making flyers on my phone. I'm doing the things that I want to do outside of there in the job. You know what I'm saying? Huh? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh yeah, you on the phone? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, look, man. I'm like, it is what it is. You want to do what you want to do at this point. You know what I'm saying? So long story short, they, their intention was to fire me. But I already felt the energy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I felt the energy and I was fed up anyway. So my mind was processing to be like, I'm out of here anyway. Right. You know, so I, I'm i really moving like, I go in the next day, they say they want me to come in and everything. I go in the next day, I'm like, I want to put in my um, two weeks. You know what I'm saying? And I did it officially. Got it typed up. I put it in, right? Yes. Now, this is the illegal thing that is probably going to bite them in the butt. I gave them that seven weeks notice. And instead of accepting my seven, my two week notice, they fired me. So they tried to make me. They tried to. Like, uh, after six years, yeah. I was like, you know what? Okay, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't like it. I wanted to make a scene or do mm-hmm. the most, but I really was like, you know what? This is better for me. Yeah, they so, made it much easier. Yes, yes, because it's like because I would have had to come in those last two weeks, mm-hmm. like, uh, like I don't know you about them, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. It, the truth is they did make it easier paper wise, no, but it's cool because I don't plan on working a job no more anyway. Mm-hmm. You got me, yeah, full time, right, right? So this was like day three or day two or something like that. We've been a full time entrepreneur. 
I didn't really know what I was gonna be doing with all this time all of a sudden got, right? My it was a nine to five, so majority of my day went there. You feel me? So Barry calls me up, she says she needs uh something done. She I really I'm just at this point I'm just utilizing my time where I can. You know what I mean? So she like, uh, can you put this shelf up for me? I'm like, cool, uh, sure, I'm not doing anything. Mind you, uh my lady, uh shout out to the Styles. She was, um, she's the manager there or whatever. So she, she was the one that called me and told me. So I went up there and I was putting up the shelf, you know. I'm like, maybe I'm gonna be a handyman. At this point, I'm just freestyling. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, maybe this is what's meant for me. Maybe I was just, you know, playing for a car and doing something. But as I'm doing it, dude walks in and he goes to the back. It's a selfie studio. So it has a lot of great sceneries and everything. Yeah. So he's back there. And at first, I was just gonna leave him alone. I wasn't going to say anything. I'm like, oh, I'm here for a show. You know me, like, one thing about someone that loves to network, every, you want to network with a lot of certain people or everybody, or, or, you know, certain situations, you like, no, nah, I should get to know who this person is, or I should introduce myself. Especially if, when you're in a room full of opportunity, you like, nah, I got to know everybody in there, whatever. So, boom, I was about to just be like, nah, I'm going to leave right on. Uh, I'm gonna just finish what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to be a carpenter or something. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so I go back there. I go back there and I talk to him. I'm like, hey man, what you doing? He's like, uh, just um, I think he was popping like the hats up to like advertise them in the studio. Like, basically, like I said, the scenery was nice. So he was putting the hats up there and getting certain shots and everything. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, these hats is hard. Like, they tough. And he said, why are you on? I'm like, nah, these hard, like, how much? Like, how much you would like, you, are you selling this? Like, you selling these hats? You feel me? Because he didn't have, like, I, I walked around with a whole box. He had maybe one, one or two hats with him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, are you selling these? Are you selling this? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He like, he like, yeah, you know, 40. I'm yeah. like, shoot, let me get one. I want that. And it was the original, the one that's in my Abbey right now, mm-hmm. and I'm holding like that, mm-hmm. that's the that's one. Cool. That's the one. You know what I'm saying? So I bought it off of him. I'm like, and mind you, I work for the radio station. Shout out to Hot 979. You know what I'm saying? DY Fire, man, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Uh, we had Hill the Hood coming up. Hill the Hood, we were selling vendor slots. You know what I'm saying? And, and big vendor slots. Mind you, we, we generated at least 300 to 500, maybe more people, like for everyone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we had a good crowd. So it's not like I'm suggesting an event where you're not going to do well. It's like, yo, I know this has to be yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm telling them about the event. My dream ain't even from here. I'm like, I'm like, hey, like, you want to sell these? Like, sell these? He's like, yeah, what's up? I'm like, all right, so I got a coming up called Hill the Hood. Uh, I think you should like an event slot. He like, bet, how much? You feel me? So my dream, that's extreme. Exchange, yeah, 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 exchange yeah, yeah, services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just sent you forty, mm-hmm. and you about to send me two hundred for this event slot. So we didn't really exchange services. Forty of what I just sent you help pay for your event slot that you want to sell probably eight, ten, or twelve hat sets. Mm-hmm. You want to generate anywhere from four hundred plus. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So honestly, that I thought that that was just going to be it because. When I'm moving, I'm moving. I'm like, all right, on to the next thing. Like I said, don't be stagnated on one thing. It's not like I thought there was going to be that. I didn't. I'm like, oh, cool, now I've been there. I actually like the hats. You feel me? He, he shot, he do the uh, event. He been there at the head of the hood. Mind you, I'm pretty sure that I was rocking. I was rocking that hat at the event. You know what I'm saying? And one of the artists in the city shot the 730 Joe. You know what I'm saying? And, and the whole side of 300, exit 300. Um, he actually bought one from him. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was a it was a red one. It was a red one, I believe. Either a red one or it was a black one. Might have been a black one. I don't know. But he got a good color. And he was like, he was like, yo, I want one of them. And when he told me about the story, he's like, it seemed like he's seen the hat before. He just made because he didn't have one. Mm-hmm. Not saying it like in a bad way, but he like, yo, I'm 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 seven thirty Joe. I need to have one of these. You feel me? And of course he like, yo, let me get that hat. You feel me? And he bought it off on big support and shout out to you, you feel me? But like, that's where it started. It's like, yo, just based off of that one sale, yo, you done already started trashing. Cause mind you, as an MC, I'm in the public eye. 
so people see what I'm wearing, even if I'm not even on that, even if I'm on some some stress or chilling, like they work, they looking, they like, yo, I like that, or I like that, you know what I'm saying? Down to the kicks, shots to easy. He's very comfortable with shoes, man. Sponsor me. Sponsor me. Sponsor me, man. I thought he sponsored my easy. These things is crazy. So comfortable. Most comfortable shoe. That's like where I've ever put on. But, um, yeah. So, long story short, what was your question? <laughs> nah, for real. Nah, like, uh, when it comes to, like, the branding, how is that different from, distinguished from every other brand? Oh, no, your question was, how is black, is black, is, is black yeah, business? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very hot, because that's where it started out buying from him. And then I saw his business, and then after the event, he reached out to me and said that he wanted me to first be a brand ambassador, but now we're actually partners, and we're yeah. investing and doing all this together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So shout out to Love's brand. Shout out to Love's brand for, uh, for partnership and brand ambassadorship, man. We're going to go all the way to the top. This is 2022. This is, this is February 3rd. 3rd. 2022, and this is only the beginning. We have an empire to build, bro. Check this out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, we talked about where he was, what you doing, what's next? Ooh, what's next? What's next? Where you going? Where you going? Oh, that? Yeah. Oh, we taking this overall, though. Overall, we go oh, with him. Man, so I just want to learn more, man. I just want to keep feeding my brain. Uh, I want to learn more about trademarks, LLCs. I want to uh, travel more. Um, I really want to be one of the official hosts for Sneaker Con. Just recently, I hosted my first Sneaker Con, which was a dope experience. Before a lot of them, Florida, big shot to DJ Rari, and the whole team, Will, and everybody for, for putting me in that uh, situation. Really, I put myself, but like, y'all assisted, you know what I'm saying? And we work together to make that happen. And I appreciate that. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's good. Man. You be giving the flowers, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. always got to be appreciated. Appreciative. My fault. For sure. So, um, oh, yeah. To go back to the brand. What makes that brand distinguish? What, what makes this brand special? Yeah. Well, the message behind it. The message behind the message behind this brand. This is love is brand, right? Yeah. And it stands for loyalty over royalty. That's what it stands for. That's what the R at the end, mm-hmm. the additional R is for is royalty. So, what does loyalty over royalty mean? This is actually a concept that he came up with because, of course, we've been a brand. Partner, I'm not gonna just agree to anything. You know what I'm saying? I gotta personally like it. And when he told me the message behind it, I'm like, that's dope. So loyalty over royalty basically means um putting loyalty over the royalties of the world. Like money, attention, females, anything. You're putting loyalty first. Like never switch up on your brothers. You know what I mean? So loyalty comes first. That's why I hold loyalty so high. That's why I put trustworthy at the top of that list. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be trustworthy. Once when people show me that you ain't trustworthy, or I gotta question your intentions. For real. Like, look, I back all the way up, man. They like, why you yeah, like that? I'm acting like that for a reason. Like yeah. that's why. Just don't 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 don't, don't cross me. Just don't cross me. You know what I'm saying? Because once when you cross me, you can't take that back. And nine times out of ten, the reason why you cross me is probably for the smallest thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I take into that because me, I don't, I don't cross the board. That's why I move the way I move, and I don't yeah. feel like I need people around me. I haven't done anything wrong to anybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I know how to stand on my own ten at the end of the day. So I don't feel like I need hundred people around me. I and mean, yeah, like mind you, the situation I was talking about when I handled the situation, he was standing around seven people, and none of them had yeah, yeah, see, see. You feel me? At the end of the day, you gotta stand on your own ten. You can't. That's why I feel like that's why a lot of people click up because they're afraid of being on their own. You know what I mean? They're not able to stand on their own. So they, they, they use the, the, the force of the people around them to make themselves bulk up. 
You know, no disrespect to any like fraternities or anything, but I know some guys that cross just to have that backbone okay. instead of being, yes, not the publicity and things of that nature, but instead of just being their own person. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, it's been dudes I've known since freshman year, and they kind of were like, for real. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? As soon as they cross, they're like, they, they this. They yeah. like, I'm like, look, man, it's best to be yourself. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's because people can't be themselves. They're afraid of who they really are. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's something to take heed to. And not just always be open to being yourself. Love it. Loyalty over royalty. Love yourself. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So big shout out to the brand, man. This is I I wouldn't be affiliated with this if I didn't believe in the vision and I definitely do. Shout out to you, Sean. Finish off with how do you how you plan to use your platform to give back to the communities? Ooh, I love the communities. That's you know what I really want to do. I really want to be a full fledged mentor. You know, big shout out to the Keenan system, Keenan Richardson. You know what I'm saying? He is someone who inspired me to do every well, not everything, but majority of what I'm doing today. He inspired me. He motivated me. You know. Because when I met him, I was really just that title that you said before, a party promoter. Mm-hmm. That's it. You know what I'm saying? I off past my flyers. I was a lit dude on campus. You know what I mean? But that's it. That's all I was. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know where I was headed. I'm just like, okay, well, the party won't be lit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Until I've seen that it's levels to mm-hmm. this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's levels. That's all was seven stone before. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? And, and, and it was like, when I met him, I'm like, yo, who is this dude? Yo, like, I'm like, who is this dude? Shout out to the king system, bro. Ah, oh, man, I, you you would have to be there to see what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. You know, people look at me and they be like, yo, party boy, you lit. You lit. I'm like, bro, I ain't taking it close. You know what I'm saying? You don't even know what's on the way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he, he inspired me, man. The first time I, I think that he really inspired me was... There was something called the Mix Fest. Fresh, I was a freshman. I was a freshman in Morgan State. Shout out to the Orange and Blue. Shout out to the 48 Laws of Power. You know, Orange and Blue, Morgan State University. If y'all know anything about this book, you need to read it. I mean, this is this is one of the beginnings of my journey as as I would say maybe I would consider myself an intellectual to some extent. You know what I'm saying? I try to be 48 Laws of Power. Read up on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you know, I had to call outside the, the, orange, the orange and blue. I love my H in front of my B. You ain't gonna get into it. That was the best. But, um, yeah, the, it was called the Mix Show. The Mix, really, the Mix, uh, with three axes. And it was him and DJ Flo. DJ Flo was Shy Glizzy's official DJ. Keenan at the time was the regional ambassador of DTLR, uh, downtown locker room. Your fashion, your lifestyle. But uh, yeah, so he was the original ambassador of, of them, and honestly, everything that he was doing, I was just like, this is unimaginable. Like, like how you're a young black dude. Like he was young in that position. I was just like, I couldn't even wrap my head around it. Like he's only a couple years older than me. Like probably three years older than me. But the position that he was in, I just couldn't understand how he was in there. So basically, he took me took me on, like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. He brought me on, and, and I started working in these fields and, and learning certain things. Mm-hmm. And after being in those those fields and those areas, I, I learned to kind of you know mature myself and, and grow with that. So big shout to him, man. But. As what what would I like to give back to the community? Uh, just be just be uh, a glimmer of hope. A glimmer of hope. Uh, probably help out some families when I can. Uh, help help small business owners grow. You know, I was talking to a young lady at North Carolina Central University, and she said she aspires to help kids get back into school. Like people that that kind of drop out or, or stop going. She wants to help them go back to school, and that's Chelsea Durham. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Chelsea, and that's something that she wants to do. She wants to help kids that that kind of lose their way from 
be in school because that was me as well. Um, get back into school. So that's something that I would like to do. I would, I would like to help people that are probably in my shoes right now or were in my shoes to get to that next step. Give them advice. You know what I'm saying? Put them, give them the resources. Mm-hmm. When I get all the resources that I need, I want to be able to help others. Have those resources so maybe it's not as hard. You know what I'm saying? Because right now, I feel like I'm a scavenger. Like, so knowledge and everything, I feel like I work in, it's not even too hard to get the information that I have to get. But it's over, they should, it should be offered. Mm-hmm. Even things as simple as doing taxes. These are not things that they teach. Oh, no. They don't teach these things. Yeah, you you got to pay for it. Mm-hmm. You want to learn something like that, you got to pay for it. Why? Because that's where the money is. Not history. Mm-hmm. Not any of that stuff they teach you. That's where the money is. Credit. Learning about credit and things of that nature, you know what I'm saying? Trade, skills. Trade, skills, mm-hmm. you know, stock markets. That's where the money is, but they won't get at you for free. Because then everyone will be right. What are we going to earn out of money? Like, Knowledge is free. Knowledge is free. It, it should be. Free. It should be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It should be. Yeah. Almost, I want to give a big shout out to Lovers Burn. All right, get yourself a hat, a shirt suit, a crew neck, a shirt, anything you need. <laughs> Get you one, you know what I'm saying? We got flavors, any color you want. And then finish your fit, it will actually make you fit. These hats make you fit. Remember that. Party Boy said it. It's a commercial. <laughs> yeah, but uh, other shout outs I would like to give. I would like to give a shout out. Whew. I gave a lot of shout outs in, 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 in here. So I don't, I don't want to make it too, spread it too far. Because at this point, I do feel like I'm dolo and doing a lot of things that I'm doing. But I do want to give a shout out to someone that came with me for this. And I want to give a shout out to Zig. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's a dope guy. Dope guy. You know what I'm saying? Um, outside of that, just anybody that I partnered with in the past, Bag Money ENT, Southway BNT, anybody that's looked out for me in any way, shape, or form. You know what I mean? Shout out to DTLR. You know what I mean? Big shots to them. Anybody else that 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 is a lot of money.